Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Well, as my jobs on the CNC machine have gotten more complicated and I've started doing cutter changes in the middle of a program, I've decided it's about time to finish my touch off block. This is a project I started quite a while back. It was my first machining of something other than a, a wood or a plastic on the CNC. This is uh, actually two pieces of aluminum, a body and a cap. And then the touch off plate itself is a piece of brass inside and that's floating on a spring. Gives a little bit of give there. The spring here inside might not be critical, but uh, I thought it'd be nice to have in case I screwed up and it came down too hard, gave a bump. It was more likely gonna save the tip of a carbide cutter if I had a little bit of give in here. Um, I'll put some pictures up right here. So inside the body, this has been bored out and there's a spring inside, which is what's holding tension on the top. And then this cap here has got a relief cut in it to locate the oval piece of brass. Let's talk a minute about my choice for a touch plate. There are a lot of good videos out on YouTube right now uh, that revolve around a three axis touch off plate so you can set zero in the corner of your material. Um, I'll, I'll put a card to that here, or at least one of them. And those are, those are really slick and they work on the same principle we're gonna use here, but I'm really at this stage only interested in doing the Z axis. If you watch those videos where they're using that uh, X, Y, and Z zeroing block, you'll notice that they're wanting the very corner of the material. And as if you've watched some of my other videos, you'll know that I usually work from an oversized blank. So my X and my Y are not always, in fact, never at the corner of the stock I'm working from. The way I set zero now is using a piece of paper as a feeler gauge and I try and be as consistent as possible. But uh, it's time consuming and I'm frequently off by enough thousands that you can see it in the job. So what we're going to do today is we're going to finish this. And finishing it should be pretty straightforward. To finish this up, we need to drill a hole in it here to accept a banana plug because this whole thing will be the conductor. And wire a banana plug and an alligator clip to the cable I've already got set up. Plug it into the machine and figure out how to make Mach 3 use it. Now let's take this apart. You'll be able to see what's on the inside and then I'll be able to drill in through the end and not have to worry about getting caught up in the spring inside. Yeah, there you can see all the components. And then the block is a solid block, it's just got spring in the middle. So I'm going to drill the hole for the banana plug in the end here, and it doesn't have to go all the way through, I just want to know if it's going to hit it. With the banana plug hole in it, now I'm just going to screw this back together real quick. I put some uh, wire oxidation protection against it, so I am more assured of a good connection. Don't have to worry about the aluminum oxidizing and giving me a, f a false signal. Now I could braze the wire directly to the brass piece on top and then connect that, but I don't think that's necessary. Hell, the whole block is a conductor, so. Next step is put these on this piece of cable.
There we go. This will go on the spindle, and this one goes in the block. All right, I think the first thing I need to do is set up a pin. So I'm going to go to config, ports and pins. This is going to be, I believe, an input signal. Here's probe. I think that's what we want. We're going to enable probe. Port 1, this is the parallel port. I only use one. And I need a pin number. We're going to use pin 13. That one's open. Uh, by having that off, it means it'll be active high. So when the circuit is connected, the 5 volts flows. It says, oh, I'm at the bottom. So we're going to go with that. Let's click apply and go wire up pin 13. Okay, here's our wires coming into the control panel. And I used red and white. And looks like I have used red for a voltage signal before, so we're going to keep that same paradigm. Right here is the digitized pin. I'm in the diagnostic screen, and when I touch the the probe together, we can see it go on, off, on, off, on. So we at least have a pin connected, we have it doing the things we want it to do. So the Auto Tool Zero button requires that we add code to it. So we go to Operator, we go to Edit Button Script, and the buttons that can be edited are blinking right now. I'll select Auto Tool Zero. And you can see that the code I've already pasted in. I'll put a card right here with a link to the video that Guru Brew did on this exact thing. And this is his code, so I want to give him all the credit. Um, I copied and pasted it in. It's working like a charm. All I've got to do now is measure the height of my touch-off plate, which I haven't done till now. And plug that number in here on the appropriate line. And we'll give it a try. Okay, I've come over to the surface plate. Got the height gauge set to zero, you'll have to trust me on that. And here's the touch-off plate. And what I've done is I've taken a precision ground roll, uh, dowel pin, not roll pin, dowel pin, and laid it in the top. And it is proud of the surface. You can't, probably can't see it here on the video. Uh, yeah, you can. It's just proud of the surface. So we're going to start by measuring to that height, and then we'll subtract out the height of the pin. we will put two inches, 192 thousandths. Okay, I've entered the touch-off plate height of two inches, 192 thousandths. And then I've set the return height to three inches. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna start by touching it off manually when it's approximately at the right height, just so if things are gonna crash, uh, they do so in midair. Here's an official test. We're all wired up. We're going to hit the Auto Tool Zero button and let her go. And now to prove it's at zero, let's see how we do with the paper test. There it is. A little loose, but as long as it's always the same, I'm good with it. It's been a couple weeks now since I shot the bulk of this video, and I've had a couple of experiences that I want to share with you that really validate why I went to the trouble of, of making something that you know had a little forgiveness to it. The two ways that this has saved me so far one of which was very foreseeable and the other one not so much. 
The foreseeable way this saved me was when I forgot to connect the ground and the cutter came down and it hit the touch plate and kept right on going and I was immediately able to hit the e-stop button and realized what had done right away, backed the head back up and everything was fine. That $25 cutter, still good. The other way that that saved me, that overdrive saved me, was a little less foreseeable. Let me show you. This is a 0.3 millimeter engraving cutter. I was using it for engraving PCB boards. And I was done engraving the PCB boards and I went about my way. And I came back and I decided I wanted to try this same engraver on a piece of plastic to see how it did. I had some additional work that I wanted to engrave. So I went to set zero and I picked this, I, I put the plate down where it needed to be and I brought it over and I hit the auto zero button and it drove it down, it hit the brass, kept going, I hit the e-stop and what had happened was a little piece of material had gotten stuck on the end of it and was acting as an insulator and didn't allow it to make contact thereby opening the circuit it never saw zero so saved one of these jobs amazingly enough being as how sharp they are it did save it wouldn't have been a great loss but just an example of one of those things where you don't always know what's going to happen thanks everybody for watching i hope you found this information useful as always uh leave comments if you need some additional information I will put some links down in the video description. I'm gonna try and link the uh, Fusion 360 drawing for this as well. Share that out there with you folks. You can uh, modify it, make your own, whatever you wanna do. So anyways, thanks for stopping by the shop. See you next time. part we just finished. Um, the counterboard and drilled holes I found some uh, 540 socket head cap screws and uh, this piece here is done and this hole is for this spring right here and the brass piece, piece we did earlier and it lays in here and it has a little bit of give you can see there's a little bit of a shoulder there right and with this on here like so the zero will come down and touch off to the plate and if I accidentally goof and overdrive it I've got about an eighth of an inch of travel where I can uh, not where I won't break the bit seriously you had to do that